Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, I've got a book haul for you today. It's a little bit belated. Um, these are all the books I got on my trip to London. Uh, I went to Montenegro but it just works out with flights and uh, travel and everything to fly from London. So I book ended it with a few days in London and my main goal in London was to go book shopping. Um, of course I did some other things as well. I went to some museums, saw some sites, uh, had some really nice food and stuff. Uh, oh and I went to the Shakespeare Globe. Um, if you allow me this little bookish side tangent. I went to see a play at the Shakespeare Globe uh, and I've done that before so I knew it was going to be good um, but you know sometimes she's you just forget how good something is. Um, it was so much fun. Um, so it's my hot tip if you ever need a recommendation on what to do in London, buy a yard ticket for the Shakespeare Globe. They're five pounds for early bird tickets and then after that I think it's a tenner. And you get to stand in the yard um, right in front of the stage and basically in Shakespeare's time that would be where the common people would set. Uh, would stand with all like the rich people and the royalty and the nobility would be in the back in the stalls around this, uh, around the yard but it's not very big and the stage is elevated so um, you always have a pretty good view and it just feels like you're right uh, you're right in with the action um, and you don't have to be worried about the Shakespearean English or know the play in advance. Um, this was the fourth time I went to the Shakespeare Globe and um, only one of those times I knew the play beforehand when I went to see Romeo and Juliet. Um, this time I went to see Much Ado About Nothing uh, and it was just so engaging and fun uh, and I think the combination of the location and uh, the way the performance is just all around you, um, the acting is very engaging, it's re really easy to follow, it's very accessible, it just makes the whole experience very immersive. I was literally laughing and crying and gasping and ooh and oh all the way through the performance and um, it just really feels like you see the play in the way that Shakespeare intended it. Um, so there's my little tip for you. Uh, let's get back to the books. I didn't really have anything in mind when I went book shopping. Um, I really wanted to like properly browse and just look at things that caught my eye um, and find books that I hadn't heard about before uh, and also wanted to um, visit indie bookstores and um, make sure that I would get things that would be harder to get uh, back home. So yeah, I got a whole stack of interesting books, lots of indie and micro publishers and I think the whole turned out really well. Um, I'll go through them in the order I bought them and I'll tell you which shop I got them uh, from too. I'm sorry I've got like a mosquito bite here and it's itching. Like crazy. Um, so the first bookstore I visited was Pages of Hackney. Um, I was staying in the Hackney area so I definitely wanted to visit some bookstores uh, um, in the area. This is quite a small uh, store. It has this very beautiful um, eggshell blue front um, shop front with a very nice window display. Um, it's very inviting. Um, like I said, it's not very big, but it feels like a store where the booksellers stand behind every book they sell. So I got three books there. First, they had a display of books by Palestinian authors and about Palestine, and they had quite a book, um, quite a few books published by Hajar Press. Uh, and I had a look at their website, and this is what they said about themselves. Hajar publishes books by writers of colour with original and transformative ways of seeing and imagining the world. 
we don't believe in upholding an either or distinction between beautiful and revolutionary. Revolutionary, why not both? Like, that is exactly why I want to seek out small presses. Um, I ended up going for uh, this one, The Stone House by Yawa Hawari. And it says, in this groundbreaking novella, Yawa Hawari harnesses the enduring power of memory in the defiance of the constriction on Palestinian life. Against a system bent on the erasure of their people, the family's perseverance is unbroken in the decades-long struggle for their stone house. How do these personal experiences become collective history? Why do some feel guilty for surviving war? Is it strange to long to a time never lived? So, this sounds hard, but I am happy I picked it up. The next book I picked up was The Dear Ones by Berta Davila. This is published by Three Times Rebel, uh, and this also sounds like a very interesting press. Um, they wrote a little bit in the back of the book. We translate female authors who write in minority languages. Only women, only minority languages. This is our choice. We know that we only win if we all win. That's why we are proud to be fair trade publishers. And we are committed to, to supporting organizations in the UK that help women to live freely and with dignity. And then there's a really cool illustration. Um, this particular book is translated from the Galician or... Galician, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, by Jacob Rogers. Um, and the blurb says, a new mother is a woman, a new mother is a woman grieving for the woman she has left behind, a grief that receives no consolation, a place without room for, for controversy or regret. Would you ever want to go back to that place? Um, this is about a woman who has a boy and when he is five years old she gets pregnant again and decides to have an abortion. Um, so I think this discusses motherhood and regrets sounding motherhood and abortion obviously um, and I'm hoping it will give me a new or maybe rather a not often written about perspective on the topic. And then the last book I got at Pages for Hackney was this one, um, The Children's Bach uh, by Helen Garner. This was out on a bookseller's uh, recommend display and uh, the cover and the title immediately drew my attention. Um, here you can see the gorgeous illustration on the cover. Um, Helen Garner is an Australian author and this was first published in the 19... 80s, um, 1986 if I remember correctly, um, no, 1984, uh, and it looks to be about a Australian family just living their lives until an old friend, an old friend from the father's university days shows up and just causes some upheaval, uh, and I was like, mm, okay, could be good, and then I read the quotes on the back and I read this quote by Ruman Alam. He says, perfect, I was so stunned that I wanted to run around the block. Uh, and isn't that just the best quote ever? Of course I want to read a book that makes me want to run around the block. Um, I love it. I'm so excited. So yeah, that was The Children's Bar by Helen Garner. Then the next two books I got from the Broadway Bookshop, which is another one in the Hackney area, right at the bottom of Broadway Market, um, which is a really nice little street where they have a market every weekend and there are some really nice shops and cafes and restaurants there uh, and also a bookshop. It's a pretty small shop again, um, but it's bigger than you think at first glance because you can squeeze past the till and then there's another part in the back. They have some more of the well-known books um, on a couple of tables in the center. Um, you know, your, your Booker Prize and Women's Prize nominations and all that. Um, but they also have some themed cabinets and shelves around the wall. So they have a queer shelf, a nature writing shelf. They have a travel section where they combine travel guides with non-fiction and travel writing from that particular area. 
Um, so like I said, I got two books from there. Um, the first one was from the queer section and that is Sphinx by Anna Goretta, translated from the French by Emma Ramadan. This is published by Deep Venom, um, which I think is a US, um, yes, a Dallas, Texas based publisher. Uh, and let me just read you the blurb of uh, for this one. A groundbreaking narrative accomplishment. Sphinx is an erotic, genderless love story that delves into the nightclubs and cabarets of After Hours Paris, exploring the relationship between a nameless narrator and a star, 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 a dancer from America. Um, a modern classic of experimental feminist and LG LGBT slash queer literature, Sphinx is a powerful and heartfelt meditation on love, loss and identity from one of France's most innovative, innovative and lauded authors. I have a feeling this will have a very interesting narrative structure and like it's going to be queer in many different ways um, and also the bookseller at the till was happy I got this book um, because he seemed to really like it. And then the next one I got was uh, Notes from an Island by Tuba Janssen and Tuliki Pietila. Uh, this is a memoir of Tuva and her partner Tuliki um, who was an artist as well uh, and they had a cabin built on quite a barren little island on the um, on the Gulf of Finland and they ended up spending their summers there for 26 years and this is like a homage to that place um, that they loved very dearly. I read Fair Play last year and it was my one of my favorite book one of my favorite books of 2023 and this just sounds like the non-fiction version of that book so I think I will adore this one. The next book I got from the Tate Modern gift shop um, which is not exactly a bookshop but I had a quick visit before going to the Shakespeare Globe and obviously they have a very good art book selection but they also have books that look like works of art. Uh, works of art um, like the one I picked up and that is Thora by Tilly Lawless. Like this is a stunning cover. I would frame this and put it on, up on my wall. Um, so Tilly Lawless is a queer writer and a sex worker. This is her sophomore novel um, and it's about a young girl who has to go to a new high school leaving behind her best friend. Um, but then quickly gets infatuated with a girl at her new school who is who is quite enigmatic and mysterious. Um, it's set on the myth, on the mid north coast of New South Wales, um, from what I gather in quite an isolated part with a lot of nature. I love a coming of age story in a rural setting, so. This one sounded very good. I also got one book from Daunt Books. Uh, I think Daunt is probably one of the most famous indie bookstores in London. It has a really iconic, beautiful shop front um, and the glory is their country's section. Um, so you have sort of a general fiction and non-fiction right when you enter the store, uh, but then when you move into the back you can either go downstairs or go around this balustrade and they've grouped all the books there by continent and then by country um, and it has travel guides, fiction, non-fiction, poetry all mixed together. Um, so if you are interested in a particular country or area in the world um, it is so much fun to browse that particular section and obviously since I was going to Montenegro I went straight to the Balkan section and I ended up picking this title, um, Balkan Bombshells, Contem Contemporary Women's Writing from Serbia and Montenegro, compiled and translated by Will Firth. Um, so it's an anthology of short stories by women from Serbia and Montenegro. Um, on the back it says, 
um, a collection to whet the appetite of anyone wishing to learn about a region rich in history, folklore and histories. Telling it like a woman does not mean literature for women only. It provides an insight into half of humanity, a window onto the lives of, ci of citizens who work, love and develop their inner lives. It's published by Istros Books, which I think is a press specialising in translated works from from the Balkans. I didn't end up reading this on my trip, but whatever, I still would love to read about the region and also probably would want to travel there again. Um, anyway, on the way back, I only stayed in London for, for like half a day. I got in from the airport around 5 p.m. and then my train back to the Netherlands was around noon. Um, so I very purposefully stayed in a hotel in the Bloomsbury area. So I was both close to the train station and also to one, um, and also to some of my favorite bookstores. One of which is Gates the World. And they are the oldest queer bookshop in the UK and they are just the most welcoming and friendly bookshop. Um, like every time I go there I either have really nice conversations with the staff myself or I overhear them talking to other customers. Um, and it just seems like they've always played a really big role in the queer community and I hope they will continue to do so. The biggest sections in their shop are probably the gay, gay fiction and lesbian fiction sections and also the transgender and genderqueer shelves. But all the letters and all the colours of the flags are represented. Um, there's poetry, memoirs, queer history, there's even a kink section. Um, I ended up with three books from three different shelves. Um, first from gay fiction, I picked up Local Fires by Joshua Jones, which is a debut short story collection. Um, Local Fires sees debut writer Joshua Jones turn his acute focus to his birthplace of Lanelli, sorry if I pronounced that incorrect, incorrectly, uh, in South Wales. Sardonic and melancholic, joyful and grieving, these multifaceted stories may be set in a small town, but they, have, but they have reached far beyond their locality. From the inertia of living in an ex-industrial working class area, to gender, sexuality, toxic masculinity and newer diversions, Jones has crafted a collection, first of all in theme and observation, as the misadventures of the town's inhabitants threaten to spill over into an incendiary final. In this stunning series of inter interconnected tales, fires both literal, literal and metaphorical, local and all-encompassing, all blaze together to herald the emergence of a singular new Welsh literary voice. Um, the author is queer and autistic, so definitely an own voices book, which we love here around this channel. Then I got this from the activism social justice um, section. This is Care Work, Dreaming Disability Justice. Uh, I haven't looked up how to pronounce the author's name, so I'm not going to ruin it now. Um, you can just look at what it is right there. This was one of the only books together with Local Fires that was actually on my radar before. I've been wanting to read this for ages. It's a collection of essays. Um, Care Work is a mapping of access as radical love, a celebration of the world that sick and disabled queer and people of color are doing to find each other and to build power and community, and a toolkit for everyone who wants to build radically resilient, sustainable communities of liberation where no one is left behind. Powerful and passionate Karuk is a crucial and necessary call to arms. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, educating myself some more on this topic. And then lastly, from the gender queer section, 
I got this book, Margaret and the Mystery of the Missing Body by Megan Milks. Um, Margaret and the Mystery of the Missing Body reimagines 19th adolescence, mashing up girl group series, choose your own adventure stories and chronicles of anorexia in a queer and queer and trans comic of age tale like no other. An interrogation of girlhood and nostalgia, dysmorphia and dysphoria. This debut novel puzzles through the weird, ever evasive questions of growing up. So yeah, it's a queer coming of age story. Um, and I feel like it's going to be trans in the broadest sense of the world, of the word. Um, and this is published by Feminist Press, and the other ones were published by um, Arsenal Pulp Press and um, Parthian Books. I also visited Foils. Um, you all know Foils. Um, I like foils, but I also find it too big and a bit overwhelming. Um, but I did browse some of their display tables, and this one caught my eye. Um, this is Daddy's Gone a Hunting by Penelope Mortimer, um, and this is a McNanny Editions book. Uh, and I really love the little details in this. Um, I love the French flaps. Um, Gotta love a French flap. I think, in fact, only like three books in this whole don't have French flaps. Um, they are my favorite. Um, I think it just makes a paperback feel a little bit more fancy. Um, I love just the lines and that little dot in the title. The paper quality is super nice. Uh, and my favorite is this. Um, they put the title in red on the title page uh, and I know it's only like a small detail but it just makes it feel really special um, so yeah I'll, I'll definitely be on the lookout for more titles from McNally, McNally editions so Penelope Mortimer has been on my radar um, as an author let's read the blurb together um, first published in 1958 Daddy's Gone a Hunting shocked critics with its feminist rage. It captures the suffocation of a repressive marriage and a desperate longing for a connection between a mother and a daughter who must, who must join forces in a man's world. Um, yeah, love a 19, 1950s suburban feminist tale. Great stuff. And then the very last bookshop I visited in London was the London Review Bookshop, which is another one of my absolute favourites their curation of the books they have in store is just spot on. Um, so many interesting titles and authors and publishers, um, you're just guaranteed to find some hidden gem in there. I ended up buying four books uh, in that shop. The first one being Azukar by Ni Ayikwe Parks. Um, this is published by People Tree Press. Um, who specialize in Caribbean and Black British authors. Um, the author is Ghanaian British and this book is actually set on a fictional Caribbean island. Now I must admit that I have already tried to read it but I couldn't really get into it. Um, I mean I was in a reading, reading slump so I don't think it's the, the book's fault but I do think it's the kind of book that demands a little bit more um, work because there's a lot going on. Um, I mean I'll, I'll read you the last part of the blurb. Um, Ni Ayekwe Parks brings a metaphor of research rich countries to vivid life and prose peppered with nods to fairy tales, 20th century music biographies, biographies and politics headlines asking the questions what is the price we pay to have a place to call home. Um, I mean, even that little bit confuses me. Um, so definitely a book I need to be in the right headspace for, um, but I do hope I will enjoy it eventually. I also picked up Split Tooth by Tanya Tsagak. Um, this is another really beautifully put together book with the quote on the front, 
and the font choice in the lettering. Um, there's also some drawings in here. Um, that's one. And looking through this book, it seems like it's a mixture of prose and poetry. Um, this is published by And Other Stories. Uh, I'll just read you the blurb for this one and you'll probably understand why I picked it up. Um, <clears throat> fact can be as strange as fiction. It can also be as dark, as violent, as rapturous. In the end, there may be no difference between them. An Inuit girl grows up in Nunavut, Canada in the 1970s. She knows joy and friendship and parents' love. She knows boredom and listlessness and bullying. She knows the tedium of the everyday world and the raw amoral power of the ice and the sky, the seductive energy of the animal world. She knows the ravages of alcohol and violence at the hands of those she should be able to trust. She sees the, the spirits that surround her and the immense power that dwarfs all of us. When she becomes pregnant, she must navigate all this. In this acclaimed debut novel, haunting, brooding, exhilarating and tender all at once, Tanya Tagak explores the quiddiest features of a small arctic town and the electrifying proximity of the words of animal and myth. So yeah, that sounds right up my street. Um, second to last, we have What Will It Take For Me To Leave by Lorraine Vella, translated by Kat Storis. Um, this is published by Press Par Press, who are a micro press that publish books from Malta. So this is translated from the Maltese. Um, and I don't think I've ever read anything from Malta before, so, so that alone was enough for me to pick it up. Um, this is a short story collection, like short, short stories. Um, some of them are only like a double, double page. Um, it has some photographs in here as well. Let me find some that YouTube will allow. Um, there we go. I don't really know what to expect from this book. The blurb is not giving a lot away, but I'm keen to read something from Malta. And Finally, the very, very last book I got uh, is this one. This is Heather Perry's This Is My Body, Given It For You. Um, another short story collection. This is published by Haunt Publishing, who publish gothic horror and dark fiction book. Uh, dark fiction books, which is not my go-to genre, but I do love a dark and twisty short story. Let's read some of the quotes on the back just to see what I'm getting myself into. Um, bodies, blot and, bodies, blot and bestial urges. This feral collection may be spattered with bodily fluids, but it's smart as hell. Um, a spectral succession of malformed and grotesque vignettes that one cannot help but delve into to, to discover the little black hearts imbued in each. A relentless expedition into the queer, uncanny lands of the body, written with a wry yet scalpel-like precision. Um, you get the gist. Um, so yeah, these, let me get them, were all the books I got from my last trip in London. Um, I am very pleased with what I managed to find. I've got so many options for Women in Translation Month and so many short, shorty September um, options. Books, man. I love them. Okay, that's getting heavy. Um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any thoughts you have on any of the books in the comment section down below or share your favorite bookstore in London or elsewhere uh, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!